if we look at industry related it's it's kind of a lot simpler picture because one of the the key drivers to the market historically has been uh, consolidation uh, we've had many slides on this on the past but you know consolidation has done one thing and it's created a very strong three tier industry of tier one tier two and tier three going forward there's no way anyone envisages you know, a losing of a tier, a tier two becoming tier one, for instance, but there will be consolidation within the smaller countries, within the smaller companies, rather. You know, the Japanese companies are under pressure, of course, Sumitomo uh, and, and New Farm, you know, possibly some more uh, in, um, relation, close relationship between those two companies. A large number of Chinese companies, of course, you've got Sinochem in that market, you've got uh, the the um, uh, Syngenta Group in that market, all putting a lot of pressure on these. You know, some of them quite large, like Nutrien, uh, to consolidate and to get bigger, to in order to compete with these two giants. So we do see consolidation, further consolidation, likely, uh, particularly in these groups of companies going forward. Um, Industry-related factors. You know, this is a very nice slide to have because a few years back. Basically, there was very few new active ingredients being introduced, but we, we, you know, we're nowhere near what we were in the 1990s when we saw lots of new active ingredients coming through uh, the imidazone and sulfurias. But you know, we're seeing year in year out a greater focus on new chemistry and less focus on biotechnology. Um, you know, to the benefit of the crop protection industry, both both off patent and patent as well. So, you know, lots of new exciting molecules coming through over the next few years um, and, and you know, over the last few years as well from, you know, from a range of companies, Japanese, plus of course, you know, the likes of Corteiro with, you know, Fempic Oximid uh, coming into the um, European fungicide market, you know, which is much needed, of course, because we're losing many of the existing triazoles out of that market. So, Changing picture, lots of new active ingredients. Of course, the reverse of that is the, the molecules which came out 15, 18 years ago, which are now coming off patent. You know, there's a number of important value, value market uh, active ingredients within that group, of course. And you know, what, what, the off, uh, what the post or the off patent sector of the uh, post patent sector of the industry needs to do is very carefully consider which active ingredient is the best to pick their portfolio going forward, you know, and to avoid everybody piling into a proficonazole or a pyroxystrobin. Um, you know, it's not about price, it's not all about price, um, and it's not all about volume and value. It's about whether or not a given active ingredient fits into a portfolio, um, an off-patent portfolio going forward. So two sides of the same stone, two sides of the same coin, essentially. See this full presentation and others driving your business intelligence by registering for the 2020 online conference and trade show at tradesummit.com.